Hello and welcome to the Women and Manufacturing Podcast. My name is Fran Brunel. I'm the president of Accelerated Manufacturing Brokers, Inc., a company that specializes in mergers and acquisitions only within the manufacturing sectors, and I am your host for today's show. Today, we are so excited to have with us Lauren Liddell. Lauren is a national sales manager for Motor City Spindle Repair Company, um, and she's also known as Spindle Chick. Um, Lauren began her career only about four years ago, um, and she's got a lot to say about social media participation with manufacturing companies. Lauren, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Fran. I'm really excited to be joining you today. Well, we're happy to have you here. So introduce our listening audience to Motor City Spindle Repair. I know you guys are, you're repairing uh, CNC machine spindles, but tell us what else you do. Yeah, so I mean, it's in our name. It's our bread and butter. We are a CNC spindle repair facility. Like you said, we're actually the largest independent CNC repair house in the USA. Um, but we also do other component repair as well. So we like to be considered a one stop shop for all things CNC repair related. So the spindles, um, ball screws, servo motors, way covers, draw bars, gearboxes, all that good stuff. Um, we repair at our facility in Dearborn, Michigan. Is there, are there machine tools that, or brands that you're most known for repairing, or is it you'll do any CNC spindle repair? Um, there are a few that we turn away. Um, we're not going to say that we're we're the best in everything because no one is, and whoever says that is not being truthful. Um, but we do see other, I mean, certain types of OEM spindles more frequently than others. Um, we do a lot of DMG Mori, Makino, Mazak. Akuma, um, the big OEMs, we can take care of it for you guys. Wonderful. So um, I'm really excited to talk to you about your participation in social media. So you're like a social media queen. I mean, <laughs> seriously, I see your stuff all over LinkedIn and good for you. So one of my questions for you would be, um, for manufacturers who maybe they're older and they're saying to themselves, why do I need to do this? I'm only a job shop. It cannot benefit me at all. What would you say to them? Well, that's interesting because I think this question kind of can even tailor to the younger generation too, because they don't really know that LinkedIn is the powerhouse that it is necessarily. Um, I started LinkedIn in college when it was mandatory through my communication class, and it was solely sold to us as being a job prospecting site. Um, it was never anything else. So when I started at Motor City, Ted, who's actually the president, said, hey, Lauren, you know, LinkedIn can be something really great. And this was four years ago. Um, most people weren't posting videos. They weren't posting uh, these motivational or more personal type posts on this platform at that time. So I started to do that when um, in a time that it wasn't done. And what I've seen throughout these last four years is that people are growing on that site along with me as well. I mean, people are that's where they're finding their businesses. That's where they're creating their relationships. Um, and I'm seeing both ends of the spectrum, the younger generation, the older generation. So what I would say to those people who have that kind of mindset is LinkedIn is not what it used to be. Um, it's not just a professional platform solely finding for the purpose of finding jobs. It's to grow your connections, to bring brand awareness, to bring awareness to who you are in your job title. So I'd say get on there and, um, and just see what it's about. Yeah, I noticed, so I was watching a few of the videos. Um, I noticed that your motor, your company, Motor City um, Repair, Spindle Repair, they're doing a lot on social media. It seemed that, and I might be wrong, but it seemed like the earliest videos I could find were actually you. Did you start that trend at your company? Yeah, um, like I said, back when no one posted videos. So I was that one lone face showing up on everyone's profile back in the day. Now it's it's more regular. You see that occurring 
more frequently on, on LinkedIn, but yes, good old little Lauren back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I'm also seeing that there, you know, so you're doing a fabulous job. Like I saw that you did, um, Hey, we have a new facility, which is a great thing to highlight because you're basically saying to the world, Hey, I have increased capacity you know, come and see, come and visit. We have increased capacity. We've grown to better serve our clients. But you're also doing stuff. I mean, it like very basic where someone in the shop is showing a machine tool running and how you're cutting apart. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of variety. Yeah. And I find that that's what makes us successful. And that's where I've seen my, the growth that I have is that balance. Cause not everyone wants to be preached at with your sales pitch 24 seven people. That's why I try and implement a little bit of my life and motivational um, quotes towards people and daily kind of devotional things um, that I put out. But it, I feel like people relate to people and they want to form genuine connections with other people. So yeah, it's just being kind of like the girl next door, but I mean, professional at the same time, there's a great balance um, and you just got to find that and you'll, and you'll grow. Yeah. So for a living, I sell manufacturing companies. So my clients are generally of retirement age and often I have conversations with them about the importance of maintaining their sales during the time that their company is on the market. And as I begin to speak to them about using very inexpensive means, social media to do that. They're like, ah, I don't, you know, they're like, what on, what in the world would I do? So the next question I have for you is for those who say, you know, gee, I'm just a job shop. What could I possibly post? Can you give the listening audience some ideas on the types of things that you have done and that you've seen success with? Yeah, absolutely. I would start that answer with saying, first off, you posting on social media is a sales type of a sales that just keeps on selling because it's always going to be there. If that makes sense. You could post a video and then three months later, it'll still pop up on someone's feed. So it's you selling without having to actively sell, if that makes any sense at all. So yeah. I would say people, like I said before, balance, people like to see things that you're doing in your shop. They like to see the physical components being repaired or manufactured, but they also want to know that you're a person that they can connect with. So maybe some behind the scenes, um, videos and photography of you just living your life or you working um, at a desk and saying how you're typing out some emails today, anything that just makes you more personable and that people can connect with. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Yeah. So I noticed your company actually does, the website is fabulous and they do a very good job. You have both a video channel and blogs. There's a lot of, con it's content rich. Um, so there's a lot of things to share on social media. Do you see any difference um, between the engagement that you're getting on the sharing of blogs versus the sharing of videos? So I feel like since the video aspect of social media is, is saturated more so than it was back in the day, back in the day, as it was four years ago, um, <laughs> back in the day, but I feel like videos um, aren't necessarily having the same return as they did back then because everyone's doing it now. They're still getting a lot of engagement and a lot of views, um, but I definitely think that having those other platforms, like you said, is, is beneficial today. So like you said, we're on everything you could possibly be on. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everything. Where I'm seeing the most engagement lately is actually Instagram. Um, so no that's, kidding. Yeah, yeah. Even more so than LinkedIn in the last few months, Instagram has definitely skyrocketed personally and for Motor City. We're all connected, obviously. Um, but yeah, blogs, people, we've seen great engagement with people reading our blogs. Uh, a tip that I would say for people is to, whenever you're making a post on LinkedIn or Instagram, if you could include um, that blog that you are trying to have people read at the bottom, like a URL or whatever website you want them to be going to, have that in that, in that post. It'll get you more traction. Okay, sure. 
Yeah. So yeah, Instagram surprised me, but as you're as you're talking, I'm thinking, okay, a manufacturer like Motor City Spindle Repair, it would be very easy for you to do before and after photos. Right. And I bet that would be a, a fabulous thing to yeah. highlight. What other types of things um, should people, like you're saying, you know, your daily life and sitting, typing emails and just sharing a little, but from besides sharing the personal, which I get the value of that, but are there any other types of general things about a manufacturing company that should be shared on social channels? Yeah, people love seeing technical aspects. So if you can break down any of the technicalities that you guys are working on, that's definitely something people like to see. They also really request the seeing the overall process of something. So for example, they wanna see the process when a spindle comes in our facility doors, what happens next and how does it get shipped back out to the customer? So people love being walked through step-by-step, step, but also don't make it too preachy or salesy. Just do like quick little quotes like, hey, we received it, we're testing it, we rebuilt it, you know, um, to give them the gist, but definitely walking right. them through processes. Great idea. So you, you've you not been in this industry long, mm -hmm. um, but in the time that you have been, um, you've been a very good advocate on social channels for manufacturing in general and for women in manufacturing. Why do you think it's important um, to, to be an advocate? Because I feel like so many people, especially women, since this is a male dominated industry, don't necessarily have the confidence to see their true potential in the industry. And they look for role models or someone that they can um, look up to that is doing it successfully um, to know that they can as well. I used to be that way. I mean, like I said, I started and I made videos and no one else did it. So I was really putting myself out there and I didn't necessarily have a person um, to look up to and, and, and find to help me through the process. So I just did it on a whim. And now I'm hoping that I can be that for someone else. Um, I'm not the ones running the CNC machines. I'm not, I'm not building these spindles. I'm in sales. I do try and learn the machine. So you'll see pictures of me doing that. But, um, that's another thing is women don't have to necessarily be running machines to be in manufacturing. There's yeah. so many other facets of manufacturing. There's marketing, there's sales, there's writing, there's, I mean, human resources that still make you part of the machining industry. Um, and to have someone to like a role model or, or just someone that's in that industry doing it to, to watch and see succeed um, is huge. Yeah, I love the idea that you don't have to necessarily be behind a machine to be in manufacturing. And women can have an absolutely fabulous career, successful financially career within the manufacturing sectors. How did you get into this? So I was in sales before this and I figured and why not apply? Because I thought sales is sales. If you can talk to someone and learn your product, um, you'll be good to go. So I did it on a whim. I applied and I met with Ted and four years later, I'm not planning on changing my career path anytime soon. That's fabulous. That's absolutely fabulous. Yeah. So what's next for Motor City Spindle Repair um, and you as a um, social media advocate for the company and national sales manager? What's next? We have some really exciting things coming up. Um, I'm going to be making an announcement actually in the next couple of weeks of our next big thing that I'm super excited about. Um, but it's also trade show season pretty soon. So we're going to be attending all these trade shows. We have some in Michigan. We have, of course, IMTS that we're going to be at. Um, so yeah, we're definitely going to keep putting ourselves out there, trying new things and um, hoping for the best. Yeah, that's fabulous. Any hints on the big announcement? Um, it's something no, I don't even know how to describe this big announcement. It's a new business within a business, I guess. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. I'm going to watch out for it on yeah, social media. Watch out for it. Very I'm sure cool. you see it everywhere. 
And I love that you guys are going to IMCS. Yeah, I'm super excited for that. It's been a long time coming. I'm ready to get back into it. Last year, actually, I went to so many trade shows, but obviously with COVID, they just weren't what they always were. So I'm excited for this year. Yeah, I think that's uh, IMTS is a fabulous event for someone to attend that is considering a career in manufacturing because it can really change someone's paradigm on what modern manufacturing is. Like all the latest technologies are displayed there. So you've been before. What mm -hmm. Describe it to our audience for people it that was, haven't been there. Yeah, I mean, this was, I attended it two months after joining the industry. So I walked into these doors and I saw all these I mean, I was just overwhelmed, truthfully. It was, I saw all these insane machines and all these incredible projects being on, shown on display. And it was jam packed to the brim with, uh, with people in the industry. So it was overwhelming, but it was so, so, so cool to see. Um, if you go there, this is a male dominated industry. So you are definitely, as a female, you're going to stand out. You, there's not going to be many of you. So um, I'm actually hoping this year, I've been talking to the IMTS event coordinators and some of them happen to be women, which they're amazing people and doing great things. We're hoping to schedule a time for all of the women in manufacturing who are attending to meet up. Um, there's a lot of online personalities. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, fabulous. Yeah, so there's all these online personalities in the, in the manufacturing industry that I figured why not bring us all together for once at this at this conference do you know for sure that that's going to happen yet i it hasn't been confirmed yet i actually just re reached out to them the other day to see what the process was but we spoke and we're hoping that that's going to happen so it's it's likely yeah do me a favor as if this is happening and i'm going to bet that it is going to happen if you're if you're asking for it and pushing <laughs> for it let me know because I would love to write a blog article about it and promote it on social channels. Yeah, absolutely. The more exposure, the better. I'd love to meet some of these in incredible people. Yeah, awesome. So as we are starting to run out of time, if our listeners would like to learn more about Motor City Spindle Repair, how best do they reach out to you? So they can reach me by email. That's obviously the most common way of reaching people, but it's Lauren at MotorCityRepair.com. Otherwise, I'm super active on LinkedIn as well. So if you send me a DM, I will respond to it um, or any of the other team members as well. We're all over LinkedIn. So reach out to any of us. Awesome. I love the work you're doing. And thank you for being with us, Lauren, and absolute best wish wishes for continued success. Thank you so much, Fran. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me today. You're a delight. Hey, if you're a woman in manufacturing or an industry that's servicing the manufacturing community and you'd like to be on the show, uh, please drop me a line on LinkedIn. It's Francis Brunel, or just call my office at 908 387 1000. I'd also like to encourage our listeners to visit whampodcast.com where you can see all of our shows and other shows brought to you by the Jacket Media Company. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.